Hello, welcome to each part four or part five. I can't actually remember now on the basics of knife safety. Now, so far we've been through um, withdrawing knives from the sheaths and obviously putting them back. Um, different uh, types of obviously cuts to do, um, like chest chest lever cuts and push cuts with your thumb. Obviously, keeping that thumb well away from the blade. We've discussed the danger triangle, which is obviously when you're sitting down, uh, doing your carving and whatever. Um, so you're not stabbing yourself, you're slashing yourself in your major arteries, in your inner thighs, and obviously in your groin area. So, um, and this one, this video, I'm basically going to do um, a few things that you should do if you're standing up and obviously using a knife. Now, I am going to mix this with a, a bit of comedy as well, but um, although if if it seems um, funny or not, um, the purpose of doing it is basically showing you guys how easy it is to um, neglect health and safety aspects of using knives, um, and especially if you're out camping or bushcraft with other people, on um, and how easy it is to um, say lose control and forget about all everything health and safety wise. Um, so the minute you withdraw that knife from the sheath you're going to be switched on okay it is a tool but it can be a deadly tool okay and it can kill or even worse just scar you for life uh say even worse than there's nothing worse than death is it but it got all the way around but say uh, you know what i mean but yeah so there is going to be a bit of comedy um involved me showing like different directions of uh, where the blade could go or where it should go where it shouldn't go um so without further ado and don't think i'm like talking to, it, to myself well actually i am talking to myself because i'm on my own but uh, i've got nobody else to stab and uh, i couldn't get any volunteers um so i'm gonna have to uh, just show you the best i can okay so lean that up a bit there 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 so make sure i don't want to stand on these okay so in the video previous video to this one I explains where the knife, I've now got my knife on my side, it's not on a dangler, this is just basically through a belt loop, okay, so when we withdraw the knife, I want to be looking, I have a stick in my hand, I need to be looking down at the knife, now you can withdraw it from the sheath like this, okay, if it's loose enough to do that, but I always like to probably just pinch it, pinch it there, obviously not there, so you're not grabbing it like that, just pinch it there, just a little bit, not hard, so it's stable. Withdraw the knife like this, so it's out. Now a lot of people use um, danglers, obviously I've used danglers as well. I have got uh, bushcraft knives with danglers, um, and they tend to be a little bit easier to withdraw from the sheath. And basically you can withdraw the, the bushcraft blade um, away from the body. I obviously hold it down there like that. So. What we need to do is chest lever. So you're standing up, make sure there's nobody around you or nobody's walking in front of you or anything like that. So always look around you. Okay, now chest lever. I've shown you this chest lever actually sitting down, but I prefer doing it standing up. So exactly the same way, like this. So I do recommend seeing the other video as well. So you're moving the stick, keeping it close to your chest moving the stick okay so that's in this position now a lot of bushcraft knives and especially more so on the survival knife the big survival knives do actually have what's like an imprint there which is called a thumb scallop this one doesn't it's like a more of a traditional one so it doesn't have a thumb scallop there um, but it's still perfectly safe to put your thumb there if your blade is pointing outwards it gives you a bit more control um, of your blade as well but with that cut if you've got a lot of material to move do the reverse grip which is that one so your thumbs not on top it's actually tucked away so you like making a fist okay and again all these cuts um, needs practice nobody's gonna get it overnight okay so again with this grip like I showed you when I sat down chest like this and again you're moving the stick this removes more material okay 
knife flies out of your hand. Right, it's not going to go anywhere. So you're not out here doing this. Your knife's going to be stabbing out there. It's nice and controlled. You're bringing it to your, to your more your centre of gravity, um, chest height, and you're moving the stick. So the knife, very, very minimal movement from the knife. Okay? It's a knife controlled manner. Even you, you can even do your push cuts with your thumb um, standing up as well, which again I like to do. Uh, it's very rarely I sit down unless I'm whittling or um, really need to do some delicate cuts. Um, everything can be done standing up. So up again, do the push cut with the thumb. So grip the knife like this. Um, no, you can even do that. You can grab hold of the knife like that and just use your thumb. Use your thumb. Push with your thumb like this if you want to make a notch. Like that, it's perfectly fine. And you're keeping the blade away from you. Okay? Always keep the blade away from you. Okay? Now, if it's more seasoned dry wood, you might want to do this one. So your thumb goes there, and your other thumb goes next to it, say about a centimetre away from it. So now you're doing like a double push cut. Okay? Now I do that quite a lot. Again, let the blade do all the work. Okay, and so forth. Okay, notch it off like this. So notice my blade, where my blade is. I'm removing the materials. Okay, so it's not that way. It's going to slip and slice into my finger. Okay, it's just straight down. And I'm controlling my neck, pushing it out of my thumb like that, so there's no chance of it slipping. Remove the materials, you can turn it around if you want, if you're not comfortable doing that. Exactly the same way, until you hear the crunch, and then you, you've got your notch there. Okay? Okay, so, removing materials. Okay, so I think I'm going to use the same stick, stick as this. So, removing materials. Same way. Um, we're going to take it out for the safety aspect of it as well. So. We don't want to be probably in front like this, pointing down. Because if that knife slips, where's it going to go? Straight there, where inside the danger triangle, where we don't want it. Okay. Now you can, as long as there's nobody coming towards you or at the side of you, you can do it in front of you like this. Okay. But there's another thing you need to remember: if you're doing it like this, where's that stick? If I move my elbow up there. Stick is there. So if that's got a sharp point a bit, okay, and you let go of the stick, it's going to go straight into your side and possibly punch you, punch your lungs up, go through nice squidgy bits that's on your torso, okay? So where's possible, I'm going to do it at the front, make sure the stick is tucked out of the way, there, okay? And you're doing it that way, which again, it could be unnatural. Some of these cuts are unnatural to people, okay? Now, normally when I'm doing it, I actually come to the side like this. So the knife, so not like this, where you, you, it's in front of you, where your five in front, it's like this at the side. So when you're carving, the stick, if it's a bit longer than this, is going to be pointing upwards in that direction. Okay? So I'll just do this. That's a really powerful stroke in bushcraft to remove a lot of material again if you slip from that position from there right the knife and the blade is going in that direction okay so you're not doing it down there you're doing it like mid height say about 45 degrees from the side so everything is done from the side okay powerful cut very powerful cut, almost as powerful as the chest lever, the front chest lever. Okay, so two cuts, and that's how you do them. Okay, um, now I'm gonna go on obviously to some probably a little bit of comedy now and show you how easy it is to lose control of your knife or not paying attention. Okay, so um, my previous two videos, or one of the two videos that I did before to this one, is putting the knife back in the sheath. 
So the first way is going to be the right way and then the, the other way is going to be the wrong way. Okay, so the first way, you've got your knife, you have finished with your knife and you want to put it back into the sheath. Okay, so you stand up straight, locate the sheath where the hole is. My t-shirt's covering it up, so I'll move the t-shirt out of the way because you don't want to poke that. Okay, and you want to put the knife, grip it quite hard. Because if it's raining or your hands are really sweaty, there is a chance that it can slide out your hand. So grip it quite hard, okay? Grip it quite hard. Now when you put it on the sheath, instead of like bending forward like this, okay? Try and bend backwards, okay? So if it does slip out your hand or whatever, it's not going to hit anything. As if you're facing forward. You can stab it in your leg from there. Or you can stab these fleshy bits if, you, if you're fat like me. You've got these love handles there. It can go straight through there. So back a little bit and that opens up the sheath more openly. Put it in. Make sure it's all the way in the sheath. And then push it down. Okay. Withdraw the sheath from the sheath. Again, if it's a, a not a, so tight fitting sheath, you can withdraw the sheath like this and grip it really hard okay so you do what you want to do with it or if you're not confident in putting it away um, if your sheath is too tight again you want to grip in your sheath there okay not round there like that just in case as i discussed earlier it might come through the sheath so we grip the sheath there so you're not pinching it because the knife won't be able to go in especially if it's leather okay so quick action through the sheath push it down there we go okay now if you don't do that if you don't do that which I've seen many many people do including uh, I won't name any names um, people that are actually buscraft instructors um, so even if you're confident and you know where that sheath is because you've been doing it for decades or whatever you've been teaching for decades right I always make a habit of locating where that sheath is to insert my knife no matter what now, I've seen a lot of people this is the kind of the comedy aspect of it showing uh, whatever they've done and they've finished and then they go like that okay so as you can see I've not located my sheath at all like this because my sheath the entrance to my sheath is actually up here okay so instead of doing this trying to locate the hole right you can actually stab yourself stab somebody else you can drop it on your toe go straight through your toe okay so even if you're teaching these bushcraft skills or anything like that okay you need to be teaching the proper way now i'm not degrading in or anything like that but if you're teaching students the students are looking to you for inspiration and health and safety aspects especially if you want to gain any rewards and certificates and things so your students are looking at you everything that you do your students are looking at you and if they want to go on to become instructors themselves they are going to be copying exactly what you have taught them so if you're doing this putting your knife in your sheath like this and looking at somebody or talking to somebody they are going to do just that okay so look down Look at the sheath where it is. My t-shirt again is covering the hole. So I'll remove the t-shirt. Make sure there's no restrictions. Okay, hold it if you want. Put the blade back in the sheath and push gently push it down. Hands out of the way. It is that simple. Put the t-shirt off the back if you want. It's entirely up to you. Okay. So that's the first no-no. Uh, okay. The other no-no is is this one. Is if you're teaching a bushcraft group or if you're um, camping and doing bushcraft with people you've got to bear in mind you've got to take them in consideration as well okay so I've done it I've been guilty of this myself in the past um, so basically as soon as you finish your bushcraft tasks and you start talking as you do nothing wrong with it but you've got your knife in your hand your knife's not doing anything, it's not carving anything, it's not processing anything, and yet you still have your knife in your hand and you are talking to maybe somebody from the side, and probably somebody in front of you, and pointing. Okay? 
So yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, no, yeah, not too bad. Yeah. Did you see that over there? On there, yeah. See, you, do you see what I'm, what I'm getting at with this? Oh, this, so this is the kind of comedy aspect of it, okay? So it is funny, yes, I agree, but you've got to also take um, something away from it as well. Because I've been guilty of it myself in the past, not not so much now, because I've took a, a more health and safety aspect of it as well. So so doing this, yeah, did you see that? It's a good program that way, yeah? And it's not only that, it's if you're, again, you with a group of people and um, somebody's walking past you, you're not aware that they're there um, and the person walking past you are not aware of what you're doing all they know is that you're talking to the person in front so you're talking to the person in front this person is walking at the side of you okay you have your knife in your right hand or your left hand and you say yeah there's a good position over there all right you see what i've done so you've just stabbed your mate or whoever probably in the neck in the face or whatever and they now they have to go to A and E, and that's your day ruined. Not as so much as their day ruined, but it's your day ruined as well. Okay, this is all comical. I know, I agree, but you've got to see the the, the seriousness of it as well. Right, these are knives. These are sharp tools. Okay, they can kill. Our intents and purposes of using knives is not killing people. Okay, they are tools for us to use. Okay, but they can kill. Because obviously knives are designed not only as tools but for weapons throughout history they are designed to kill as well skin game kill bushcraft whatever okay so even when you're standing up obviously I did sitting down on a previous video this video is about standing up and how easy it is to lose focus of everything around you okay and how easy it is to stab somebody so you've always got to think about health and safety okay so you've done your work, you've done what you're doing, okay, and you're talking to the person in front of you, okay, so, and it, it doesn't take, you know, a split second, you know, to, you know, to, to put your knife away, to say, just, let me just put my knife away, mate, and then I'll, I'll be with you, okay, put your knife away, okay, put your knife away, now I can talk to the person in front, now I can talk to the person at the side of me, okay, whereas if you haven't, Okay, so as well as stabbing somebody, you don't know that that, that knife is not going to come out of your hand. If it's been raining and this handle is wet, even my carter can be very slippery when wet. Okay, wood especially can be very slippery. Alright, even if you've got gloves on, accidents do happen. Okay, so I've got nobody uh, with me in the woods today, I'm just using it as an example. So I know I'm in a safe environment when I'm uh, showing you these things. Okay, but I'm just showing you guys... Again, health and safety and how easy it is to lose control of your knife. That's going to probably affect somebody for the rest of their life. Or, po or possibly even doing themselves a really bad injury and possibly even kill them. Yes, it wasn't on purpose. It wasn't intentional, but it's just an accident. So we've got to look at things. We've always got to be thinking. Thinking how we can minimise um, injury, not only to ourselves, but other people as well. So we're not, yeah, did you see that film the other night, mate? Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's banging, you know. Boom, flies out your hand, sticks your best mate in, in your forehead. Game over. Yeah? Or, again, somebody walking past, you've got your knife in your hand. Yeah, do um, you know the other day, mate? Yeah, there was an actually brilliant spot. You're right over there. Your mate's coming past you or whatever. You've just stabbed them in the face. Yeah, so, again, comedy aspect of it. Yeah, it is. I've not seen anybody do a video like this, so um, I'm probably going to get into trouble <laughs> doing this if I upload this. Saying, yes, I'm showing people how to use a knife and stabbing somebody, but no, it, it's, it's not. It's not about stabbing people, it's what can happen if you lose control of your bushcraft tool. So, always got to be switched on. As soon as you draw that from your sheath, you stay switched on. If you're no longer using it, okay, put it back in the sheath. Put it back in the sheath always now again if you're on the floor you're bending down and whatever um lots of people can lo uh, leave the knives on the ground okay if you are not using your knife put it back i can't stress that easily enough it's not difficult it only takes a few seconds to put your knife away all right but it can change somebody for the rest of their life if they if they step on your knife and have a serious injury or maybe they fall on the floor and then just and they land on top of your knife it's not going to end well, you know. 
So um, I'm probably going to leave it there for knife and staff health and safety. Um, thank you for watching, and obviously I think this is part five of the knife and safety videos. And if, you, if by all means you've got any comments or you think I've got really really bad acting skills, uh, drop me a message down below on the comments. And thank you very much, and thank you for watching. Now I need to relocate my uh, little gizmo. Absolutely love this thing. Okay. Hope you enjoyed the videos and like and subscribe on my video on my YouTube channel if you want, which is Lone Wonder of Buscraft and Wild Camping. Um, it's just got full of everything on there, so it's not just Wild Camping and Buscraft, it's pretty much everything. Um, discussions on mental health and things like that. It's a brand new channel, so there's not a lot of content on there yet. Um, however, um, if you'd be so kind to like and subscribe and, and tell people about me, then uh, hopefully I'll be able to do some uh, more informative videos for you in the future so thanks for watching and bye for now